Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and our virtual interview edition. We want to pursue this and proceed now with Tier 1 Silver. And we have with us Peter Dembicki, the CEO of the company, and also Dave Smith, the Senior Vice President of Exploration. Good morning, gentlemen, to Canada and I think also Peru, right? Correct. Good morning. Yeah, great to have you here. Thanks for taking the time. And I think uh, we, we, we couldn't uh, choose a better time point for the interview because you just reported two hours ago, uh, again, fantastic uh, channel samples. We want to talk about this in a second. First of all, Peter, I want to know about, uh, yeah, what's the overall situation? And also, especially, we had a lot of viewers asking us about Peru. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, again, Johan, thanks for having us on and for the news this morning with, with Hurricane uh, this is this is actually really uh, a huge catalyst for Tier One Silver. You know, when we started off on this venture uh, last last uh, you know October, when we split out from Oren, uh, we didn't know too much about what was going to occur at Curvi and, and what it came to be uh, a real headline kind of project. And then in the background, we were working on acquiring this Hurricane Silver project, and. You know, we saw some historical results, the, the, the data and the work that had been done from the previous owner. You know, we had a lot of confidence in because they were formerly former Newmont uh, group, which, of course, Dave and Michael Henderson come from as well. And so we negotiated. It took a long time. We acquired it. Uh, and just as of September, we were finally given access by the community. And, and to bring it back to Peru, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of government permits you can obtain you don't have the support of the community, you're not going to get very far. And so the fact that we got access to this property, to the region that contained all the high grades uh, was huge for us. And we went in there on a quick reconnaissance mission uh, back in September. We sent a team of geologists up there and, and they did a, a quick rip of channel samples and, and tried to really see, you know, give us the, the green light. Is this going to be a project that we're going to go ahead on in advance or is this something that we have to think about? more and see how it fits in the portfolio. These results today really prove to us, yeah, this is something that we're going to go for. And mm -hmm. it gives us a second act of extremely high grade, high caliber project within our portfolio that is a hugely complementary to, to Kuribaya. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not taking anything away from Kuribaya. It is just mm -hmm. another project and uh, it's so good for our valuation. Super, perfect. Then let's talk with uh, Dave about uh, your results you have brought out and bring them a bit into the context. Yeah, the um, the Hurricane Project, again, I mean, we picked it up from the Pembroke guys. They do their exploration steps in a very similar way to us. So it's kind of like fast forward of the process for us. And to be able to jump onto the ground and pull those kind of trench numbers really shows the prospectivity of the area. And you know, our goal here is to advance things to drill targets. I mean, people need to see an intercept on a drill string. That's what we get paid to do. So this is the first, very first step in that process. You know, like we fast forward things through exploration. We get to the trenching stage very early on the project and we produce, um, you know, we produced uh, four meters of 441 and um, another six meters of 375, which give us the confidence that, you know, there's, it's all about grain width. And so, you know, we have grain width in the trenches, so we'll advance that target up into a um, into a geophysical look. It's good enough that we see that there's five structures across the property at the um, at in this portion of the land position, which is just one the corner of the property, really. And this is where we have our primary access. And it's all about access, like Peter said. So this is where we've had access. This is the first place we've we've been able to work. And we're able to pull those sort of numbers. So, yeah, again, it just shows us that the, the ground is prospective, that there's multiple targets out there, that we're seeing grain width early, uh, we're fast-forwarding the, the, the process, and, you know, we're, we're going to keep evaluating this target with geophysics. Um, it's only poking out of the ground slightly. There's a lot of soil cover in the area, so we're going to soil it and see actually what the true dimensions of it is. Then we'll go to a geophysical stage and we'll try and get it ready for drilling. Mm -hmm, exactly. That would be my next question here. So drilling means uh, something which uh, yeah, would even more than uh, justify and confirm what is in uh, in it, actually, I would say, because uh, those were channel samples. So you did that from the surface, right? Correct. Yeah. There's a there's a number of um, adits and workings along those structures. Um, the, the locals in the area believe that they're from pre-Hispanic and some of them are Hispanic. 
So they've been there for a long time and they're obviously pulling very high grades because you know, nobody goes to four and a half thousand meters to dig holes in the ground without a really good reason. So just seeing those adits gave us the confidence that there was something there. And this trench sampling is, um, you know, it's the first time someone's approached these veins in a systematic way with, you know, modern exploration techniques. So, you know, it could be, it could all be just sitting there. We just need to see what's in the third dimension with some geophysics. Mm -hmm, fantastic. And Peter, you said in your comment in the news release, uh, as we believe we are identifying a second major opportunity for world-class silver discovery in Peru. Can you say that already that early? That's great. Well, it sure feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we have to wrap potential around all these my, my great comments, but it's, uh, yeah. you know, it truly is. And, and, and mm -hmm. Johan, as we spoke about before, uh, before the interview, You know, this is this is a standalone project that any exploration company, if they had the opportunity to wrap their arms around this project in its own, uh, it would be worthy of standing on its own. And the fact that we have Curabaya at the stage where it is, and now Hurricane as two standalone projects in one one company, it's it's so big for our valuation. So yeah, um, I'll stand by that for now. Okay, super. I love that. <laughs> Optimism is always good. Nobody really looks like that because uh, from the surface, there must be a lot underneath. So from that side, we look really forward to some drilling then there. But you also released, I think it was like a week or two weeks ago, uh, some great drill results with like uh, 1,480 grams silver equivalent of a meter within a three and a half meter width of those 442 grams, for example. Uh, that, I think that was hole six uh, in the Madre feeder. Mm -hmm. um, so that that looks to me like yeah a lot of good things are going on here right oh for sure i mean this whole six was again another huge catalyst for the company because you know if you've been following our story and, and we've been doing a great job of telling our story from the very first days we had this incredible 20 square kilometer footprint of bonanza grade rock samples that were mm -hmm. no one's ever seen before 300,000 grams per ton silver kilo gold emanating you know over border to border 20 square kilometers and then You know, honed in on our on our on our legitimate footprint that we identified five major feeder structures that were all hosting multi kilo intercepts. Um, one of note, 20 meters of, of close to 400 grams per ton. You know, silver. This is like big intercepts, high grade. And so everyone was like, you know, we had comments on social media saying, "Why don't you guys just take a rake to the top of your property? It seems like all the grades on top." Um, and so. The fact that within only our first six holes, we encountered our first plus kilo intercept, uh, that's huge. That is huge. We have to remind ourselves, this property has never been drilled in history. Mm -hmm. There's no historical workings on it. There was no historical mining done on it or anything uh, and rarely any exploration. So for Dave to compile the data and do the work that he's done over the past few years to get to this point, And within our first six holes hit that intercept, that's huge. That means not only is that surface enriched, but it, it exists at depth as well. Uh, so that, that's so big for us to continue on, on and, and pursue our next phase of drilling. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. I have also on my notes here, hole seven, the results are still pending. And uh, you have also, um, I'm not sure, was that also hole five on the Sambalaya feeder? So what's going on there, Dave? Yeah, the whole... The whole five on, on the Sambalaya structure is really significant also because it's another meter of half a kilo. And the Sambalay and the mother feeders are the two that we've seen look the best in the drilling. They've got the best vein widths, they're the best epithermal textures, best mineralogy. And they're the ones that sit in the best position to the geophysics. So they're the two structures out of the, the, um, the four that we've been able to drill test to date. We've still got the fifth up at Cambona, which is the best in our trenching so far. So that one's going to be exciting to go after in a year. But, you know, our first salvo of holes have been quite successful so far in the first six because we've got a we've got a meter of half a kilogram. And we've got three and a half meters of almost half a kilogram as well on those two structures. We know we know that they continue up through Cambona. We know that they have about three kilometers of strike length on them. So, and we're just learning that now. We're just seeing that. And so... To see the, the, the validation of, of our grade and width, albeit thin, it's still high grade right now. And if we contextualize that with all the trenching and all the trenching to the north and the scale of the property and all the rock chips, it's like, well, it feels like 
we did a pretty good job in our first six holes at least mm -hmm. to, um, to show that it's not a service enrichment feature. And um, that we think we're vectoring in a good direction because that's where the data says to go and that's where the best results have been today. Mm -hmm, super. So um, how many holes are still pending? I have hole seven here on my list, uh, but probably some more. Yeah, we, we, um, we're on hole 16 at the moment. Um, and so we're drilling away. We're going into target tonight on our last hole for the for the season. Um, and we have um, we have uh, drilled five thousand one hundred meters, and we're averaging about three hundred meters is our average depth in our holes. But we're testing everything from one hundred meters, uh, fifty meters below surface, all the way to you know four hundred fifty five hundred meters from surface. So we've had a good test, top to bottom. Yeah, we're just saying that um, they got the we got uh, six holes back. Yeah, yeah. So we have lots of lots of holes pending uh, that'll be trickling out over the next couple months uh, from Kurabaya. And uh, you know, stay tuned. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. We're seeing some great things out of the core. Um, uh, we had some exciting holes up near the Diatrim Dome Complex, which uh, is the geologist dream, so to speak, as, as Dave said. So. Uh, yeah, this is it. This is wrapping up our first phase, which has been such a blur, such a uh, expedited uh, project since we started. And, you know, we have to pause for this rainy season, uh, even though they don't get too much rain there, but it's desert uh, terrain. So if there are any flash floods, it can be dangerous for workers. Uh, but this, you know, next couple months will really give Dave and the, and the technical team a time to download everything, really study um and invite as many experts to take a look and see you know where we're at and and how we want to target phase two so we'll mm -hmm. get drilling again end of march uh and ramp this thing up and and include that Kambaya zone to the north of us which wasn't in our original uh drill permit area but now we're applying for our dia or dia which will allow us to drill up to 200 holes so we're going to be aggressive with with Kurabaya. we're going to be aggressive in expanding it and then we're going to have hurricane coming to the to the forefront as well. So lots of things coming at, at tier one. Mm, super. So those two hundred holes, but they are not all for next year, right? Yes, correct. That would be that would be a great one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but to give you to give you a sense, our current permit, which is called an FTA, allowed us for twenty drill pads, and you're allowed two holes per pad. So we had forty holes to work with, but also restrained by the amount of roads that we could build. And uh, and that limited us to how many holes we ended up actually doing, uh, which is why we'll get to about 5,500 ish meters uh, for this first phase. And then, you know, we'll we'll reverse engineer everything and we'll take a look at all the data and see how big our program will be for phase two. But to have that freedom of road building and uh, pads and holes that we can really attack this thing the way we want it. And remember, uh, this is a huge footprint. And Dave had one diamond drill rig to stick a little you know hole into a big big haystack and uh he's done a phenomenal job to date and it just shows the enrichment of this property so really exciting and we can't wait to be really aggressive uh for mm -hmm. phase two in the spring yeah will you add then more rigs you know good question you know with the we use this term you know um diamond drill for learning and rc for earning adding another uh diamond drill or or adding an rc to get those results you know, much faster and, and expedite mm -hmm. everything. And they don't need water, so to be uh, cost effective. But at, at this point, we're still learning. We're at the infancy of learning about Kurabaya. And mm -hmm. every single day, uh, these guys are learning more and more about it on a geological level. So um, at this point, uh, we still need to get the results out from, you know, uh, another 10 mm -hmm. holes. We have mm -hmm. 10 holes still to come that we don't know about. And that'll help us form the strategy for the spring. So maybe you don't know about, but maybe Dave already looked a bit on the core. <laughs> are, you happy, are you happy what you see? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been, we've, been, we've been drilling up and down the, the mother mm -hmm. corridor. We've been up to the Diatrium Dome mm -hmm. complex and um, we've been drilling some, some good ones under there as well. So we've seen really interesting things in the core. We, we like what we see. The system's real. It's there. It's just going to come down to like, how big is it? How, how do you vector towards the really sweet meat, the sweetest spot in the system? Because quite frankly, these systems can all occur over a, over a stretch of 50 to 100 meters. That can be the, the meat that you hang systems on. So that, that, that comes with good structural understanding. It comes with more holes. It comes with more time. We're going to get there. And, you know, we think that 
the structures are big enough and long enough, the grade's good enough, the, the, the initial drilling's been good enough, that we're going to stay aggressive on this thing. We like what we've seen in subsequent holes. And um, we think that we've got a system here. So it's, it's just a question of time and volume of drill holes, really. Absolutely. And maybe also a question of cash. So do you have the money for next year then? Yeah, so we have enough money to, to bring us through to Q2 next year. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, everything will be results dependent. Everything will be market conditions and everything. Obviously, we're heading into holiday season here. So um, can't expect too much to happen over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll look to obviously top up once we, uh, we know exactly how much we need. We're not just going to raise money to raise. Uh, uh, as you know, with Ivan and, and the group here, where uh, we heavily strategize on <clears throat> making sure every dollar uh, goes, you know, as much as possible into the ground. So again, we, we strategize heavily on, on every dollar. We want to make sure that every dollar is used for the most part into the ground. Uh, so after we get all the results back from Kurabaya uh, into our data room, and then we know how to attack Kurabaya and attack Hurricane, only then will we know how much we need uh, to make these programs successful. Perfect. Super. That was a great final sentence. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, Dave. Uh, wish you all the best, of course, for the holiday season. Merry Christmas and uh, yeah, Happy New Year. And uh, yeah, we look forward to your uh, next 10 holds and we look forward to a very aggressive 2022, I would say. Thanks, Johan. Happy holidays. Thanks, Super. Man. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Commodity TV in the virtual edition here for you with Tier 1 Silver. And uh, I must say, really uh, impressive what the guys have uh, achieved this year. And uh, so far in that really short time frame, and the first six holes look already fantastic. Great drill results today. And also, it looks like that they have two world-class yeah, projects now, which are probably standalone uh, mining projects, hopefully in the future, Hurricane and Kuribaya. And uh, I would really suggest uh, follow this company, check it out. Lots of news are coming and they want to be very aggressive next year. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.